This from your parents. And last but not least, the uh, 20th marriage anniversary to Mr. Frederick Osei Kofi and Mrs. Dinah Osei Kofi. Uh, this is from Thomas Adote Papo, formerly here at TV3. 20th wedding anniversary. Happy, happy, happy anniversary to you. And, and also to um, Nana Kwesi Amedi or sign of Asesawa Methodist Primary, you are GS, in GSS, GHS 1 today. Congratulations. This is from your mother. I've been joined in studio by the Deputy Majority Leader and also the Member of Parliament for the Futu Constituency. Joining me here is a private legal practitioner as well, uh, lawyer Afenyo Marking, uh, Alexander Kwame Afenyo Marking. That's his full name, by the way. So, so Omenje. Omenje, mm. You're doing very well. well. well you brought it onto yourself. <laughs> uh, on what you what mean? Point? On what you mean? Hey, you are slanging it. More body. Mm. 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 Oh, what point? Oh, on what point? On what point? Yeah, your people, they are happy with you. Oh, I see. They, By the grace. I saw the, the community center. I saw the hospital. I saw the one that's uh, coming up in the name of uh, the Honorable uh, Mike Hammer. Yeah. I've seen a lot of stuff that you're doing. You're trying to build a whole city. Yes. Um, Efutu has a history. Mm. And for some time, we lost that glory. By the grace of God, I got onto the scene. The youngest mm. to have the opportunity in the Ford Republic. When I was coming in, people had their doubts. But I had a clear vision. Having been an assembly man and a presiding mm. member, mm. I loosely understood the problems. Right. And I told myself, well, just to open the chance for future young men mm -hmm. to be in service, I should go the extra mile. And by the grace of God, uh, we've been trying. Mm. At least we need to name projects after people who have made contributions right. to Futus development. Mm -hmm. In the area of academia, mm -hmm. politics, um, trade, uh, at the family level, chieftaincy and all that. And get everybody on board. Right. So, yes, the health center that was uh, commissioned this, uh, this week. Mm. Tuesday, that after, was it. Yes, right. Honorable Samuel Ousa Okay. Um, and then the Warababa Health Center is going to be named uh, after... Uh, Honorable Michael and why the why are you choosing your political opponent to name uh, a project? No, after him? we are looking at an inclusive uh, approach. Okay. If we say want to lay a foundation mm. for people to rally around, and we're talking about Unity Square, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. are talking about Heritage Center. That's right. Then we should demonstrate mm. uh, something for people to know that you are in service, you right. are serving your, right. your, 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 your community, mm. and it doesn't matter the political divide. So the ICT facility at uh, the NVTI mm. was named after Honorable Nico Miyabe. Right. He was a PNDC secretary, mm -hmm. I mean, a PNDC um, uh, secretary for the con uh, community, I mean, um, mm. uh, district uh, chief executive then. And then we have another project coming up after Honorable Nye Frame. Mm, mm, okay. Mm, we have mm. Captain Ama Community Library at New Winneba. Okay. And then we have the first MP, mm. uh, 93, Dr. Atua Yebiakwa. We did a whole surgical mm. block. He mm. was uh, a medical doctor right. at the Winneba Government Hospital. Right. So a whole block has right. been named after him. And then we have Dr. Butri. Mm. He was, he's not a politician. He's a medical doctor. He served the winning. All program. signs of the winning by yes. the area. And the question is, are you not putting pressure on the other parliamentarians who, for example, no, it's not about may not have the word with well, them or leave. may not have the connections let's to be able to get people to say, I want to come and support? Well, let's not talk about other parliamentarians. Mm. Let's not talk about uh, putting pressure. Let's talk about Efutu. Okay. Uh, I know the dynamics in Efutu. What is the end game? I know in the terms dynamics. of the legacy, the future, what is uh, the end game? I, you get into politics first knowing the dynamics of the area. You get into politics, you get elected, and you must roll out your vision. Right. For the time being, it is my considered view that I need to put in place public sector deliverables, social infrastructure as the honey. Mm -hmm to draw the ants closer, to get businesses moving. Mm. 
You remember my crusade on the UUW campus? That's right. The mainstay of that crusade was that people were not getting jobs. And we thought the university could provide that platform for entrepreneurs to tap into. I mean, they do a lot of procurement. And then we also felt that the university could also partner us to do social intervention programs like burden libraries and mm. all that. Mm. But here we are. I would say that I lost that battle because the university sees itself as it being a, a, a Biafra Republic. Mm. And kind of if you want to talk, it's as though you want to politically interfere. So I've given up that battle. It's okay. But I believe that in the fullness of time, men of reason will now come to realize that Markin wasn't asking too much. So for instance, we say that university must have its corporate social responsibility program that in a year, mm. you would want to support a project in the community. They okay. have a zero, mm. a whole UEW, a zero. Then service delivery. We were saying that, look, there must be local entrepreneurs who must be supported. Because as it is, if the students are not there, mm. the town is empty. And if you have all the businessmen coming from outside and you cannot grow local industry, mm. you don't create the opportunity for business to thrive. Because you come to Winneba, I, 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 I say to you that there are no jobs. Really? The young men, your WhatsApp message, they come. We want factory. We want this. They have high expectations. You should have one district, one factory. They are, they are, they are. You they should are have one of, district, one factory. Well, we are focusing on service delivery, okay. Not the factory, factory properly so called. Okay. We believe that with the education facility there, we can strategically position ourselves as a public sector uh, infrastructure destination. Okay. Get a lot of public sector projects in Attention there, there. Mm -hmm. get people population to grow so the housing deficit is very critical we are looking at it then draw in the tourism factor so okay. that is why if you go to the runabout we have the reconciliation runabout mm -hmm. jb dankwa mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. kwame nkrumah mm -hmm. we are telling the whole story okay you drive into the city mm -hmm. you come and meet unity square then down to copa junction or Simpam Heritage Center. We have many more of these to do. I know. Well, you have done well. That's uh, what, what I will say. Uh, and your people are happy with you. Well, by grace. I'll come for some more Futu lessons. Well, um, the one who taught you, you know, <laughs> flies your Futu for you. I won't tell you who, by the way. <laughs> I know. There's but, an Futu man here. I know. Let, let's get into Parliament. What are your expectations for, for this year? Well, um, Last year wasn't too good. We didn't end well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure um, this year we are determined to make it better. Uh, engage each other more. Mm -hmm. Those browse and things that were on TV, mm -hmm. I think where Ghana has gotten to, right. we don't have to create that impression of ourselves, especially in Parliament. Mm -hmm. you know, um, we agree to disagree. And I think that the way to go is to tolerate each other. We've been in opposition before. There were serious matters that we disagreed, but we never went physical. Mm -hmm. And I believe that our colleagues on the other side will not repeat some of these things again, that going physical, mm -hmm. trying to attack, you know, whatever. There are a lot of tools available. Mm. for you as a parliamentarian. Right. If you disagree, the, the, the rules book allow you to take certain steps. Again, you can also go to court to mm. look at, you know, strong points that you think that as a matter of law, the court should look into. That is the only way we can enrich our democracy, mm. with respect. So we are engaging each other. Mm. And if you heard Mr. Speaker in his uh, opening address to us, I think he set the tone, you know, that to the extent that he says he takes responsibility as the head of the institution. Right. So, yes, what happened was not too good. 
but we look forward to but, but what do you think brought about that confusion because we, we come to parliament we see in the lobby uh you share meals you share conversations pleasantries and all of that your brothers call yourself bro honorable and all of that uh, what could have sparked that well i can't speak for those who who initiated mm. the brow mm. so i would say that in a democracy you don't allow these things or you don't proceed on that path mm. to express your disagreement as to why they did that it is for them to to answer but i think that it it, it was really needless i mean when we had issue mm. earlier on we 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 worked out quietly when we came back and they we wanted to consider their budget and they also had some disagreement they worked out quietly they didn't mm. even come in mm. now we're going to vote and the deputy speaker had expressed a view that look to the extent that he remains a member of parliament mm. and to the extent that the constitution has not expressly prohibited him he's going to exercise his right to vote what has the standing order what say? i'm saying mm. is that, yes the standing order does not prohibit it supports him the standing orders and the constitution that's why even that day mm. when my respected learned colleague uh, dr yeni right. uh, argued solely on the standing orders mm. i i stood up and expressed surprise that for the first time in the in the jurisprudence of the house i'm hearing a respected learned uh, colleague talking about standing orders and abandoning the constitution but parliament is the master of his own rules well see? our rules are subservient to the constitution the constitution mm. takes precedence that's right but that notwithstanding i again submit that even the standing orders does not that book does not mm. deny the first deputy speaker or a deputy speaker of his right to vote let's that, put that, that that's, that's a funny subject so uh, honorable. I'm, well so, so for example let's say that yes uh, two days ago i interviewed uh, the honorable harun idrisu mm -hmm. i've heard the first deputy speaker also make comments to suggest that you will all have to vote if you want that simple majority for example to pass say the e-levy honorable harun idrisu insists that if you are in the chair and you for example do a head count or call for a division which you call for the other time then the person presiding cannot vote that's the bone of contention bro let's not belabor the point mm. the matter is at the supreme court let's wait right uh, i would don't want to repeat myself okay let's wait for the, the court to interpret. The but mm. i may have to refer you to gojoga adra i did that case mm. you know article 94 2b has a list of some prohibitions right so if you are a member of uh, uh the judicial service you are with customs mm. you are with the ministry of education etc mm. etc et you are not to take partisan a card or mm. be mm. in partisan mm. politics mm. and all that at a point i had my problem with that provision that it seemed to limit in its scope mm. So I went up to the Supreme Court for interpretation. And my contention was that, look, other public sector, other public um, uh, servants mm. should be included. Because, for instance, if you look at Ghana Education Service mm -hmm. and Ministry of Education, these officers are one and the same in real terms. But if the Constitution makes mention of the ministry of education right and leaves out Ghana, Ghana education, education service first. then it's the constitution is being discriminatory mm. and that all those should be included and also if you go to the ministry of roads and highways they have been prohibited but if you work at Ghana highway authority you are allowed to have a partisan card the supreme court unanimous mm. decision through my lord uh, Bafu mm -hmm. disagreed with me and said if the constitution had intended to prohibit those other public servants it would have said so right and the next day uh, the Ghanaian times was afenio marking dismissed banner headline 
I'm saying that we went through all of these. And Honorable uh, uh, Dr. Ayani disagreed with me. He was a mm. deputy mm. attorney general. Mm. We argued in court, and I lost that case. With that precedence in mind, I now get surprised mm -hmm. that for partisan purpose, somebody who argued against me will now change position. Because, you see, the, the, the mainstay of you, their You want the principles to apply. Obviously. Mm -hmm. What has changed? The mainstay of the argument is that, look, the Constitution prohibits Mr. Speaker. And that to them, to the extent that that prohibition is there, it applies mutatis mutandis to the uh, deputy speaker. Mm. And I say no. On the basis of the principle in Kojoka Adra, mm. once the constitution did not expressly mention them, mm. you cannot add them. That is what I the, the, the we, 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 told We're us. told that the speaker is due for medical review. It will go on the 29th. It will not be in, obviously, when it had been intended for the E-Levy to be laid, the, the, the bill to be laid. What do you see? Frankly, I am not aware. I'm in leadership. Okay. Uh, the majority controls government business. Mm. The majority leadership is in charge of government business. Uh, I believe that travel arrangement of Mr. Speaker would be made known to us. I don't know. Okay. Uh, this morning, I had an engagement with uh, my boss before coming here, okay. he doesn't appear to officially mm. have knowledge of this. But I believe whatever arrangement Mr. Speaker has in, by way of medical review or whatever, he would brief us. Mm. And then we would know mm. what to do as a house. But for mm. now, mm -hmm. I, am, I am unaware of that. M Mr. Jose Wusu, uh, First Deputy Speaker, seems to not, uh, in his own words, he cannot trust the speaker to help in the delivery of government's agenda. You are, as, as majority, in charge of government business. But he says the way the speaker is conducting himself, he cannot trust, you know, and, and all of you must vote. And you all of you that. see... What are your, what uh, are your own... Uh, uh, should I play uh, the uh, video? Should I, should oh, I play no, the video? Wait. Wait. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see, uh, a political statement must be understood in its context. Okay. Uh, all right? Mm. When a deputy speaker among his peers says, that, look, we have a number, 138, trust in that context must not be construed in the negative sense. Okay. Help because me. I was there. Help me, right? Yeah, sure. You see, when somebody says that you cannot trust somebody to be doing your bidding for you, mm. that you have government business, colleagues try and be present in the chamber and let's do government business, instead of perhaps thinking that somebody else will facilitate it for you. Simplicity. Don't... So that was the context. I'm saying that, yes. Mm. Don't, 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 don't read meaning outside of this. Mm. I was there. Mm. That basically was his contention. Mm. He did not mean that Mr. Speaker is not trustworthy or that Mr. Speaker... After all, Mr. Speaker has no role to play in terms of the voting mm. on the house floor mm. all right so the language used that phraseology must not be misconstrued he was using it in context that you cannot trust mm. speaker to do government business no that that's exactly the I point see. he was making and that come in your numbers mm. if you are there and you are voting then you are there and you but, are voting. but that would be tough given the fact that you have seven mps who are also seven ministers of state uh, the president wants them to do more. Yes, I agree. So that is why his point must be understood in the context as I put it. Okay. So we would have to arrange. Mm. If you control government business, you determine when a particular matter must be, you know, decided. Tabled, right. So then we take a decision and use the inner workings of the house to mm. determine it. So I think um, that's about it. Consensus building has become topical. Say, let's find the middle ground. Do you see that happening? Do you see that there's fertile ground for consensus to be built? Look, I have to be honest here. We've had the best of cooperation from our colleagues. We are a political class with our own ideologies. Okay. And, Johnny, you should expect that we're also in competition. Uh, the NDC 
minority in parliament, with all due respect, they've done what they are supposed to do. I mean, because we've done a number of things mm. by consensus. Okay. All right? A number of things. You should expect that on very sensitive matters, they would disagree. Me, my only problem I had with them was the brow, the physical, okay. that people were attacking. Mm. But apart from that, what else do you expect opposition to do or minority to do? Mm. Because 2024 is just right there. All right? We are bringing Ilvi. Mm -hmm. You know, first, they supported us to approve the budget. Right. The appropriation. Mm. They, yeah, the estimate. We did the, mm. Yes. Mm. Estimate all of us participated. We finally did the uh, appropriation. Mm. The committee brought a report by consensus, mm -hmm. unanimous, mm. on the House floor. By consensus, we approved the appropriation. Now it's got into the legislation, and that is where, again, I have a problem with them. You agree to e-levy as a policy, okay. but you are disagree with e-levy by way of legislation. Is, is that why the majority leader said it's already been passed? And well, that's why they are passed. saying, well, then implement it. Well, but you need the enabling act. You need, an, you need the law. Which, which they to, are refusing to partner well, with. So pass. that is where I am coming to your point. That as a matter of principle, their party is of the view that no more taxation. Okay? That is their mm. principle. Mm. Then at a point, they also came to realize that, look, Government still needs money to do business. Mm. So they came out with this 1% that they will go with us if it is 1%. Mm. But they had to do 360, U10, because their constituents were like, hey, mm. we want zero tolerance. So mm. you realize that when we're building consensus mm. and they were getting on board, they had their own internal problem that, look, you said no from day one. So there's Too nothing right, like no. even 1%. Mm. So remember that they, they checking out on the 1%. And we were at 1.75. And the finance minister engaged the telcos and got some uh, deal there. And the telcos were ready to lower mm. their charges. So we got some 0.25. Mm. Meaning that the net effect of the 1.75 was now 1.5. But, but Harun Idrisu insists that, look, for example, Vodafone wasn't charging anybody for that. Um, uh, MTN, MTN has controls a cap over 80% so of the market. So that if you what say I'm that saying, you're trying saying, to take credit that belongs to the telcos Well, but it was side. negotiated. Mm. It was based on discussion. Mm. But anyway, we are now back to the E-Levy. We are saying that two main things Two main things form the basis for the introduction of the e levy are roads and job creation. Mm. Roads is a major concern. Johnny, mm. here I want you to join the crusade. I've watched you. You know, I've watched you. Sometimes our people disagree with you, but mm. I mean, I understand some of your approach. I mean, mm. sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm. It helps us as politicians. Mm. You are complaining about roads. It's not easy. I'm a road fan. The number of Goro boys in the system moving around uh, certificates, mm -hmm. people have worked, they have to be paid. There's no money. Government is getting six million a month from rotos. What can six million do? Sometimes we have money we can't disperse. 30 million. You don't know who to pay. So a new system is being introduced. A system that would allow for regular, sufficient, reliable inflow. Mm. Government has identified this as a low-hanging fruit. That, look, let's all tap into it and see how we can use the revenue thereof to solve the roads. But the general problem. masses of the people... Johnny, say, I need to finish this is, this is too hard. John, Johnny, sorry, I, sorry I, I need to finish sorry with about respect. That. Two, mm. the many you two are crying. If I open my WhatsApp... Mm -hmm. Many youths who are asking for jobs. Napco. Now, we need to create an entrepreneurial environment mm. to allow for those who want to do their private business to go in there. How many can walk into the banks and get loans? In advanced democracies where industrialization is key, they support businesses with grants. When you are having a factory and you are paying 30%, somebody is getting... Uh, uh, one percent. So government is saying that look, this you start. We want 
to now support the youth from the district to the region to the national level make conscious effort to create a new crop of entrepreneurs somebody needs fifty thousand somebody needs forty thousand and these young men they have a lot of ideas mm. now the issue is the trusts people are saying that oh can we trust government to utilize this mm. and utilize it without unnecessary wastes in the right. system. So, for example, the so, Auditor General's report for 2020 so said, let's we lost 12 billion. Let's deal with you the acknowledge, You acknowledge that at the retreat, and you said that, look, there, there, there's some mischief that's been played, but there are also genuine... Genu exactly. I and mean, that very, tax utilization and mobilization must, must so, be synchronized. It's so, Johnny, that is why you and I must move away from the attack on the political class and look at the construct holistically mm, mm by dealing with system failures. But don't you think that, for example, an utterance by Honorable Dr. Steve Namwa, MP for Insurance, who said that we will pass it and they can't do anything oh, and we are in government. Oh, so I mean, he, no, no, he no. said that. Johnny, he said that. Johnny, he said that. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, he said that. I don't think you want to introduce... I'm sure you've seen the it. tape. John. There's something like the posture. The posture. The posture. John. The posture John, doesn't it... John, can we make... John, can we make... Progress? We are making progress. I'm asking you. You know... The, the, the posture... Does it not, for example, railroad this good process you're asking for? And I thought you made very solid points at the retreat that, yes, there may be mischief, but there are critical points that have been raised that we need to look at and we need to harmonize tax mobilization and utilization. Then you leave the retreat and he makes that statement against what majority of Ghanaians say we are not too happy about. I don't want to play the tape. Uh, because you, you may not be too excited about it. You know, when you want to follow politicians and their communication, you must always appreciate the context. Mm. So sometimes if you, you don't contextualize and you take it out of context, it could create problems. But that not was standard. It was very clear. I'm saying that not was standard. It was clear. Johnny, you want to... You want to divert? No, I want your I want your opinion on you that. You want matter. to divert? No, I want your opinion on that matter. On what? On Honorable Stephen Amoy's John, stance. John, the Baptist, right? The Baptist, all right. You're, you're patronizing me. Okay, sure. John, this morning, hmm. I'm here as a deputy leader. Right. And what is your position? By the by, to say that hmm. the e levy is a necessary levy to solve two major problems and government should be trusted mm. by way of how these funds will be applied listen when we were in opposition when we didn't know about e levy we said certain things as a party in opposition that's right we thinks our friends in government were like you are in opposition you don't know so these are mere political talk what were some of these? One was free SHS. Two was one district, one factory. Mm. Three, party for food and jobs. Let me limit myself to these three for the right. time being. Right. Now, when we got power mm -hmm. in 2016, 2017, mm. government did not delay in the implementation of the free SHS. Right. Even so, there were a lot of taxes that government had to simply forfeit. NDC had introduced some taxes, some levies. Government, if you look at the 2017-2018 budget, there were a lot of taxes that government had to forego. Say, look, mm -hmm. we can't do this. To the extent that our friends in the NDC were even telling us, hey, if you take away all these taxes, how would you govern? You remember? I remember. Right. Good. Fairness. You are a fair man. Mm. Good man. Handsome. <laughs> Done well. Now. You are patronizing. Oh, I'm not. But we are having a healthy conversation. I, I understand. When it's good, you say it. When it's bad, you say it. I understand. But your emphasis when it's good is low. So I just wanted you to echo that. I just, I just said the good things you do exactly. in your constituency. Well, that's not a your market. We're talking about the government. So, Johnny, the point is that mm. even the, the point of taking away the nursing training allowance, mm. teacher training allowance. We mm. criticize our colleagues. Right. They said, no, there was no money in the kitty. So President Muhammad said, look, he needed to allow them to pay for themselves. Let's come to electricity and water. They said, 
fact. Mm. Ghanaians were asking for reduction. President Mahama said, no, it's difficult. Mm. The production cost was high. Now we came in without introducing any new tax. Mm. We reduced electricity tariffs. Domestic 17% plus, mm. industrial up to 32%. The facts mm. are there, the records mm. are there. We didn't introduce tax to do this. Now fast forward. Government was making gains. Mm. Then COVID came in. When COVID came in, all your sources of inflow are getting affected. Mm. So you are in a tight corner. In the heat of this COVID, you're also supposed to provide social services. So like you introduce free water, the very people who are the lowest ebb of mm. fortunes will need your support. So what do you do? But we are paying for those. Uh, oh, I'm coming we to the borrowed point. borrowed for I those. agree. Mm. I, I'm, I'm making a point. Even borrowing has become expensive. The opposition in parliament says, look, government, you are getting to an unsustainable level. You can't be borrowing. Now you're born. It's uh, very expensive. That's right. Okay? If you are not careful, some people are even saying that uh, if care is not taken, you may have to go back to the IMF. Mm. And we know what it, what it means when you go to the IMF. You freeze employment. It means that the situation is going to get worse. We know what happened to the NDC. Mm -hmm. So what government is saying is that in spite of all of this, Ghanaians, it's difficult to ask this. It's difficult to ask this. But please, trust me to put these monies to good use. We are in a difficult situation. Mm. We can't be borrowing. By the way, government has two sources mm. of generating income, revenue. Domestic. Domestic. Revenue. You get taxation, mm. grants, mm. Loans. Loans, right. Loans, grants, and whatnot, they are in one category. Mm. Taxation is another category. Mm. If you take more loans, you get criticized that if you are taxing to his burden, it's, it's a huge burden on Ghanaians. Mm. So you are caught in between the devil but, but, and the but, deep But it's a question of trust, like you're saying. So let's deal with that one. How, how do you propose so that Ghanaians will trust you now? Very well. Because, see, they're looking at how much you've borrowed, how much you've collected in taxes, and they say, we can't see what you say you have done with those for oh, us. Come, come, you know, come it, on. I mean, it's yes, wet on jo the Johnny, Johnny, So now, how do, you, Johnny, how do you propose to engender Johnny, that trust? Johnny, hmm. you see, may I say sometimes it's a communication. Okay. But today, hmm. Johnny, please do a documentary for me. Go to all the 47 NVTIs we have in this country. Hmm. In Efutu, eh? In Efutu, Winneba. We had our NVTI in 1980. From that day till Akufadu came into office, no single infrastructure was ever added. Mm. Quote me. Now, Akufadu today, they have two hostels completed. They have a new BNC workshop fully equipped. Mm. Come to Winneba and take pictures, take videos. Mm. They have a new office complex, fully furnished. I spoke to my good friend, uh, in Japan. Mm -hmm. he said he didn't know that his own backyard, that was what was happening. So he has asked some people to go and take videos that even in Fosu, the NVTI fully equipped new infrastructure I'm saying this is a crossbow. So you're saying there's evidence to show that you're using the money well. Of course. So then why are the people complaining? Well, I can't take that away from them mm. as concerns that they have. Because some way, somehow, you can also see some, some leakages in mm. the system. Mm. If you see Auditor General's report, and there are complaints about waste, you, you'll be, you have every cause to be They angry. say the president should stop traveling. The president should oh, cut down on. his expenses. Oh. The, the ruling class should show the people that they are also sacrificing. Cut your salaries. Uh, article 71 holders, uh, look at your monuments again, your ex These are the okay, demands that the bro, people are making bro, on the streets. Okay, thank you. Again, the impression is being created as though Article 71 is only the political class. Mm. The judiciary is part of Article 71. All right, DC is part I'm of saying the judiciary is That's part right. of Article 71. That's right. All right? Mm. So? Council of State, they're part of Article no, So, mm -hmm. you see, let's help situate the construct right 
I agree that tightening of belts should start from the elite mm. in society. I agree. Mm -hmm. I also agree that we must have verifiable systems in place to demonstrate that, look, we care, and that those who are paying must not say that these people are taking us for granted. I agree. Mm. How do we do it? That is why you are there, Johnny. That is why you, when you do your criticism, when you do your videos, mm. I will not get angry. Mm. Because you are pinching me. That sit up. Mm. So if all of us will come to that realization, that the media, civil society, investigative journalists, to the extent that they are pointing out errors in society, they are pointing out the ills of society, we, the political class, with the power to govern, must take advantage and say, let us correct the situation. So I think that we shouldn't overly say that, oh, things are generally wrong in the system. Mm. So because of that, we let the system, you know, collapse. The minority, so, for example, is saying that, look, we have approved your budget in its entirety. Yes. Save the E-Levy. You don't have an ally to help you activate your rights under the law to impose the E-Levy. Yes. They say, look, that small chunk you're asking for will not solve all the problems you are listing. Yes. At least we have given you everything else, else you have added but the E-Levy. So go with it. So we should look for money to finance the e uh, to finance the road sector. Mm. And then the youth start program, mm. which means we should go and borrow. I beg to disagree. We are saying that let's internally generate. I think that it will be the biggest good news for mm. our contractors. Mm. The biggest good news for our youth. Mm -hmm. If we start rolling this out mm. and Ghanaians see that a contractor does not delay. And you know, road contractors, the number of people they employ, all categories, okay? The laborer, the artisan, the engineer, the technician, they employ all of these. And when they get the jobs, mm. within the period, they take a lot of people out of the, 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 their homes and give them jobs. So it means that if we are regularly paying mm. those involved in that mm. sector, we our roads yes will be fixed we'll be happy people would have uh, money in their pocket and they'll be happy with government it, it does appear that the consultations were not extensive i remember that when i was in parliament um towards the latter part of last year one of the reasons mr kenoferata had come to parliament on the day the vote was supposed to be put was that he wanted some more time to consult yes please now even though it was against your practice where the leaders had to make their closing thoughts known and then the vote will be taken. A strong point was made from your side and he was allowed to speak. Yeah. Now, it does appear that during the Christmas and New Year holidays, time was not taken to make those consultations. In fact, yesterday, the mobile money operators were also raising concerns and saying that we have not been consulted at key stakeholders. I know that the majority is meeting the minority today. No, the finance minister. The finance minister is yeah. meeting the majority today. The minority. The minority. Why couldn't we do those consultations? No, but and, and why now? And for example, what are we now going to discuss now that well, the cut is out of the bag? No, it can't be. Mm. In, in, in politics, you don't say never. Mm. You don't give up on the situation. You continue to engage. So yes, if it didn't happen yesterday and it's happening today, the value is the same. To the extent that you have shown good faith, and this afternoon, uh, I'll be part of a team mm. that will be going to Kofordia mm. to further engage. Right. So, after the engagement process, we will not stop. Yes, it's also good for government to do this. If government has shut the doors and say, well, we don't care, then that's a different thing. But look at it. Even the, 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 the percentage, mm -hmm. and you... you followed my my own opening remarks mm, mm. i said that boldly to colleagues that from all we're hearing Ghanaians expect some reduction right Ghanaians expect some reduction mm, mm. if you interview people even our colleagues in parliament they think that we need it of course they are not ready to share the political risk with us i agree initially they wanted to share the political risk but they took a political decision that no stay where you are that's fine
without consulting their constituents. Well, well I don't want to. Say, well, but that is your job. I'm you represent us. If you don't consult I'm us before, saying that you they, take a hard stand. For, well, it, it's problematic. For now, we are taking full political responsibility, mm. and we are taking that risk. But we need to engage them. We need to explain to the people that just as we successfully rolled out free SHS, just as we didn't impose additional taxation to do free SHS, mm. we are telling you that this levy is a necessary levy to help us out of the situation we find ourselves. I see. Let's listen to Dr. Baumia quickly uh, on what his thoughts were on, on tax and savings, for example. Take a listen. Savings. There was a one percent imposition on savings, which was later with investments. Yeah. Investments, mm, mm. which was later. I mean, even to think about it was was well. It's been suspended. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so it's been suspended. I mean, I mean but even to think abolished. about it. Mm. Oh, it's now abolished. Yes. Is it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. but even to think about it, mm. it doesn't. It just questions who are making these policies. I mean, but you, isn't I mean, it just another way? Another um, way know, of raising it, revenue. Well, yes, but when you become desperate, this is what happens. That when you've mismanaged the economy mm. into this hole, then anything sounds great to you because you don't have any option. You, you see what I mean? And this is the problem that they, that anything that is taxable that can feasibly be taxed, they are trying to impose taxes mm. on it, increasing withholding uh, taxes on withholding, and so on. Uh, all of these are. That's uh, Vice President Dr. Baumia when he was uh, a running mate for Nanado Dango Kufado. And thanks to Joy FM for that video. So, is the government desperate now? This was the, the, these were the words of Vice President Baumia. Uh, is the government in a desperate place? Governments all over the world are facing a situation where they have to find a way of giving comfort to their people. Mm. Nobody expected COVID. Look at our growth proud to COVID, mm. something that has never, ever been achieved before. And even the situation we find ourselves, inflation, when things were okay, mm. we saw what others could do. In the heat of all the happenings, government has managed to sustain all its social intervention programs. Not a single one of them has been canceled. All right? What government is saying is that there is a choice out there to borrow or to generate revenue. Right. In all of this discussion, I don't think, Johnny, any of us is trying, would try to say that government doesn't need revenue. Where from the, the, the pressure to build social infrastructure, the pressure to build schools, mm -hmm. we see videos of schools under trees. We see videos of children not having desks. In my own constituency, people send me videos of children not having laptops or desktops to learn ICT. All these things come at a cost. The e-levy is a levy that is non-discriminatory. That all of us who are patronizing electronic transactions should make a contribution. Mm. Now, I don't want to get into some comparison here. The kind of metaphor that Dr. Baumia was creating must not be misunderstood. Mm. At the time that the, our colleagues in the NDC were in government mm. and the kind of decisions that they were doing and the kind of situation that they found themselves and the discussions that were happening then were very clear mm. to him. Now, look, you could do it better. Now, the NDC tell us, can they tell us what their alternative is in all of these? Because, look, we don't just criticize for the sake of it. You are a government in waiting. You've been in power before. The NDC has had eight years plus eight years, 16 years. If you had PNDC 19 mm. years to it, they've had a great opportunity. But today, mm. you cannot mention a single social intervention program that they introduced, implemented successfully. Mm. They have none. Mm. We have. And we are saying that we have challenges. They should tell us that in the heat of COVID, mm. what different would they do? Because they say borrow locally. Issa has endorsed they, they, that, they, that okay, point. So, 
So you'll be crowding borrow, out... Borrow locally. Oh, you'll be crowding out the private sector. Mm. Borrow locally to do what? So if you are borrowing, mm. well, my simple understanding is that so you go for three bills. You know what that means? Ghanaians will now give their money to government. Mm. And government would pay a high price for it. So there will be no business. So you'll be telling Johnny that, Johnny, if you have 50000 go and buy treasury bill. Government is going to pay you 21%. Don't do a small poultry farm there. Don't get into farming. Don't give that money out to a sister who wants to do mobile money business or want to sell uh, cats or wants to do provision store. But rather, go and put it at the bank. Is that the new era we want to create for ourselves? I beg to disagree. Okay. Let's, I know that you have a 2 p.m. appointment today. We'll talk about that in wrapping up. But, but quickly, what's the business for today? The, the majority, minority leader, sorry about that, had indicated to me that they would resist any effort to sneak uh, the, the E-Levy in. Uh, now we know that uh, it, it's, been, it's been set for what, 1st February, is that it? Or is it, is it today? Johnny. Yes, sir. Uh, if I have to respond to every political statement, made I, I wouldn't be a good politician mm. all right some punch lines are, are there to bait and some punch lines are traps mm. and as you know how certain politicians operate mm. so let's leave it there if you had a chance to meet napco beneficiaries this morning who have not been paid for about five months what would you say to them first uh, my empathy you know, and second, assure them mm. that if you've been on the program for two years, a year, three years, mm. and you've been paid all these months, and you have five months outstanding, then there's an issue. Have patience whilst government takes steps to resolve and get you paid. Because obviously, yes, I agree. Mm. They have every legitimate right to complain. And even so that the, the, the program is being terminated, you know, they would have every cause to complain. Mm. But the hope for them is this you start. Because not all our graduates can be absorbed in the public sector. So the hope for them mm. is a you start. This e-levy that's is coming up is going to create a new platform of opportunity for many of them who have their own initiatives to do their own business so let's all collectively support it hmm. but i believe that government has heard them and if they are not talking about one year hmm. allowance in arrears they are not talking about six months and they are talking about five months obviously it will be worked on and they will be paid it's gonna broke well, COVID came announced. The world over, governments have had serious challenges with their finances. Ghana is no exception. Mighty America has serious challenges. Mm. Mighty UK. The European Union is lucky because they are pulling resources here and there. They are trying to support those who have challenges. But it's Ghana broke. The whole world is in peril businesses have gone down mm. if almost six months nobody there were a lot of tra travel restrictions businesses shut down and even now there are travel restrictions it's gonna broke and such a situation does not create wealth mm. then ghana is broke i am saying that the situation will find ourselves all over the world no nation can boast of being wealthy it's gonna or getting broke. getting Richard. Is Ghana broke? I have answered you. Your answer was a sentence. Is Ghana broke? The question is in the midst of COVID, can any nation have sufficient resources to develop? Do you agree with the our Fitch, businesses? Fitch, uh, rating of the economy as B minus? I have not heard of Fitch rating. You have not heard of I Fitch have not. Rating. not. You are telling all. me. But if they have their own rating, Mm. It is their own perception about what they see. Okay. And I can't take that away from them. Corruption perception in this. You've seen that. We my are brother. Stuck. They say we are stuck. My brother, I won't come and sit here and pretend on certain realities. We have a general problem, institutional problems in the country. 
any serious democracy should expect it. However, when these things come up, we don't have to pretend that they don't exist, mm. but we must take steps, proactive steps, to work together to minimize, eradicate. So if somebody says that there is corruption, it's not for me to come and say, oh, there is no corruption just because I am in government. Mm. I should first listen to the person and ask him for the details. Yes, corruption perception index. Which areas did you concentrate on? Again, you and I know that any time the word corruption is used, the first victim or the first corporate mm. is the politician. All right? right? So we have oversimplified it and we allow a lot of things to go away. You've been listening to PAC hearings, Public Account Committee right. hearings. Mm. Most of the things that come up, you know where they come from. Go and sin no more. So let us look at how to strengthen our institutions and continue to work at them to deal with issues of waste mm. and to ensure that whatever resources that we get is not the politician alone who is in this governance mm. structure. All of us but collectively. But the stops with the politician, I agree. the leadership. I agree. That is why mm. the heat must be on us. Mm. At the same time, let's look at the value chain and see how collectively mm. we'll deal with it. I thank you very much. Alexander Afenyo Marking has been my guest. He's the member of parliament for the Futu constituency. He's also the deputy majority leader in Ghana's parliament. And Johnny, thank this you for afternoon, uh, 2 p.m., will be uh, in Kofridia, right? Uh, Kofridia, yes, right, for the town hall meeting. The MPP has a town hall meeting. We will listen and we will dissect, bisect, and trisect, hopefully. But after the break, teacher Kwame Akokoti, A+, is joining us here. It's a packed day today, I told you from start. We'll see you after the break.